everyone, welcome to Connected. I am your host Fabiana Espinosa and I am more than happy to have the chance to share another beautiful human being life experience with you. If we think about our last year of school, did we know what we wanted to do after graduation? Some of us had no idea what was next. Some others are crystal clear about it. Today, we meet Perla Tames, a woman that had her mind on her game at a very early age. Her path is pretty impressive and inspiration is all over the place. Stick around, we are about to start. Thomas is an inspired visionary and international speaker with a keen ability to motivate others to discover their true potential. With candor, humor, and wisdom, she challenges teams to transform their experiences with adversity into tales of hope and triumph. Perla's vast entrepreneurial endeavors, educational experiences, and international exposure have positioned her to communicate with broad audiences in a manner that is heartfelt, effective, and captivating. It is my pleasure today to introduce Perla Tames, who is talking to us all the way from Texas, in the US. Perla, welcome to Connected. I saw your story and your life experience is impressive. And I wanna go ahead and start. Please tell us, you launched your business at age 21. You launched an outpatient pediatric clinic. How did it happen and how was that experience for you? So I had a dream when I was uh, young, before I started the university, I would see speech therapists treat the adults in my mother's adult daycare center. So when I decided to study communication sciences disorders as a speech language pathology assistant, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. When I started working, I started working for a company that had just recently opened and I grew with them as a therapist and them as a business. And that gave me the ability and the blessing to be able to get to know the operations of how uh, outpatient rehab facilities in Texas were working. At the age of 21, I felt ready to start my first company and without fear and without doubting myself, I decided to open up my first company. You have always been at the elm of startups of different areas. Tell us about those areas and please share what have the, each of them taught you all of this time. I myself and I was always very, very close to them and they did from construction, agriculture, uh, oil, dry cleaning stores, uh, manufacturing of, uh, of clothes and, and healthcare towards towards the end of, of, of their very busy entrepreneurial career. And so I had that backup. When I started business, I started heavily on, on healthcare and getting to know the different um, industries, sub-industries within healthcare. Healthcare is very, very broad. And so I got to know about therapy, home health, nursing, internal medicine, rheumatology, and, and that's how I, I put all the ingredients together and would always be making my own tips and, and advice for other entrepreneurs from different industries. From there, within the last 12 years, I have ventured myself into real estate, nursing, uh, magazine, I started a magazine, I've done furniture, produce of uh, import and export of produce, which is fruits and vegetables as well. Um, and, and, and always reviewing and educating myself in the operations of the different industries is, is what have made me a successful entrepreneur. Right. And like nowadays, that world, not, not only a word, but it's almost uh, a profession to be an entrepreneur. There are so many people that are deciding to say, I'm going to be good at just like growing businesses, opening businesses and just make them thrive. Tell right. us on that, on that note, um, you now do, how did you get from entrepreneur 
to a public speaking person? So early on, you know, when I started my company at 21, I and some of those therapists that that jumped ship with me and, and believed in my dream when I was yet so young are still with me in the company. And I've always been very transparent with my businesses and my operations and my personal life. And so I always share my life's experiences to others and, and kind of motivate others to not get stuck in, in, in personal, emotional problems or in professional, you know, battles that, that we go through, right? And so I've, I'm always very, very keen to sharing what I live and how I fixed it so that people can adapt it to, to their lives, right? And so I've always been told that, that I inspire people, that I motivate people, that I share and I'm so caring. And so I have found myself leading so many people into an education path, leading people into you know, finding their true, their true self, right? Going through, through a marital problem, going through a family crisis, enrolling children into the university, uh, rescuing people in the streets and, and, and taking them to the hospital. And so I have found that that's what makes me happy, right? Sharing my life's experiences and sharing the trials and tribulations that I've been through so that others can overcome their issues is what makes me the happiest. And it's, and it's priceless. And so that's how I found myself being a motivational speaker and inspiring others around the world. Right. And Perla, tell me, like a lot of people, and I will say young people, you know, sometimes when you want to take a big step or you want to make a big decision, you get insecure because you not always are surrounded by people that are supporting you, that believe in you, that, you know, are giving you that that hand so you can make your your work uh, through or you can make your dreams come true. So what would you tell those young people? Well, definitely, we we are what we create, right? So take your responsibility that your atmosphere, your environment, your life now is your responsibility. So if your life now is not what you want it to be, then you create the opportunities. You don't rely on others to create the opportunities. Second, the people around you do matter, right? So once you believe in yourself, and you're in your nutshell, which is what you believe and what you want to create for yourself, you have to surround yourself with people that also believe in you and your intentions to, to get closer to your goals, right? And so you need people that thrust for you, that, that provide that wind to push you forward to your goal. You don't want people around you that, that are going to be negative, that are not gonna believe in you because that negative toxicness will play an impact. Yeah, right and, and it'll create negativity around you right and so you are what you create and if you allow that around you that's what you're going to become so it's very important that you believe in yourself you take responsibility and those around you are in tune with what you believe right definitely that is true and then when you are hired to pick because um, another thing that i wanted to note a lot of people do public speaking but they're not always paid right? Correct. Because you're not always recognized as. So tell me, how do you prepare when you get hired for to do this public speaking? What topics do you, uh, what topic are your speeches aimed at? So uh, I am, I believe I am a very well-rounded entrepreneur. I have been in at least 11 industries myself, plus the experience that I have seeing you know, very early on in life that my parents have been in. And so when I get hired to be a public speaker, I like to know who's hiring me, who's my audience, and what are the interests of my audience, right? And I will then tailor the conference to the audience. Um, it's very important um, to know who you're speaking to so that you, you're, you're able to make a valuable impact. Right, because I've saw it on your website, you kind of give like, there are different um, focus that you put on, on your talks. So on, on your path from all the ones that you have already done, which are the ones that you find that people uh, reach out of you for more? Well, well, I think that um, people reach out to me in whatever industry you're in, how do you make your company productive and successful, right? And so when you're mentoring the CEO, the CEO needs to first of all embrace fear, 
and challenges because that's something we live with every day. Being in business and being an entrepreneur, you have to be ready to slide, glide, and duck all at once. You slide, you glide, and you duck, right? Yeah, because <laughs> things come your way, and 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 right. tomorrow is 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 unforeseen. We don't know what's gonna happen, you know, in the next hour, right? So you have to be ready to embrace challenges as a CEO. You have to be ready to plan and execute. So knowing where you are and who your team is is very important so that you always have them ready to execute the solution for the next problem. That's number one when we're mentoring CEOs. And the other thing that is a very hot topic is how do you embrace the culture of your employees to be productive? And so I always say without my team, I'm no one. If you don't value your staff, your contractors and your employees, then who are you leading, right? And today's day and age, you're here to lead, not to be a boss. We're not to be dictators. We are here to empower people. You empower people to be the best they can be today. You train your people so well that they can go and work for the competitor, but you treat them so good that they never want to leave. And they want to be a part of your organization. That is right, and it's very important. And I think that it's a topic that is getting more and more um, popular. Because back in the days, for sure, things, the relationship between, um, you know, uh, among people in a er work of area, area of work, it was definitely different than how it is handled today. Correct. Perla, do you have any other passions? What else, what are the other things that you also do? I have a passion for, for helping others. I'm a philanthropist at heart. I was born this way, you know, now it has a name. I mean, it has a name, right? But but I believe that under this skin, we're all this, we all have the same blood color. And so helping helping those around us at all times is, is what I love to do the most. You know, if, if I see, if I walk out of my house and I see somebody carrying a bag and it's an elder lady, you know, walking with bags, I like to stop and help her carry her groceries into her house. And so that's those are things that we are exposed to every second of our lives and we don't value that right and so lending a helping hand to others without barriers is what makes me the happiest and i've found that to be one of my busiest hobbies you know i go out on the street on the expressway and somebody has a flat and i have to stop and help them you know um it, it's just a part of my of my everyday life it's like instead of going to an hour of yoga i i spread that hour you know sharing love wherever i'm at Right, in the most practical way, like immediate help. That right. is a beautiful and it's, a, I think, very powerful, um, like you said, like a hobby or like a thing to do. Because those little things are what, like, are the highlights of your day, I'm sure. Correct. Correct, because you always find a story, right? And behind a story, there's always a lesson. And so you never know, you know, you can walk outside your office right now and you're gonna find somebody that needs help. You know, maybe there's a mother in crisis. Maybe, you know, there's a, a person having a schizophrenia attack, right? And, and you're there to help. And from that assistance that you're gonna provide, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna get to know the life of these people. And in that story, there's always a lesson and a lesson that will always make you value who you are, what you have, and, and kind of be graceful for where you are in life. Exactly, and that's where my next question was going. How do you keep yourself inspired? Because, of course, we would like to help and we can be like more direct to people and we can find more human relations, right? Because I feel like that's what we have lost the most lately. So, okay, we approach, but that doesn't, um, doesn't change the fact that also we encounter difficult situations and sometimes you might have four or five, six business going on, but maybe, you know, you're not getting the, the, um, the feedback or you're not getting the results that one would like to have. So, and I know you also have your whole, your life as a, as a mom, you are, you have your home, you have your work and all of these, um, the beautiful life that you are uh, work on to have a, a beautiful results, but n life is not like that, right? We know that. So how do how do you keep yourself inspired? How do you keep that that string going on? 
So I think I'm a, li- a life learner, right? I am always constantly learning. And no matter how good the situation is or how bad the situation is, I am always learning. And so I think that that has made me um, always be pushing forward. I've been in tough situations in my life, very difficult situations, emotionally, financially, with business, you know, and sometimes things are not going the way they are. But when you embrace the problem you're in, because when life is not pretty, is when you're not getting the result. And if you're not getting the result, it's because you're yes. facing some problems, right? So usually when things are beautiful and perfect and going just well, well then you, that's your happy place, right? But as you said, life is not like that. So when life is not what you expect, it's because you have a problem and you're dealing with a situation that you're not comfortable with, right? And so what I recommend to people all the time is, Embrace the problem you're in because in that problem lies the best lesson and it's the lesson that you're here to learn, that you're here to overcome, to 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 be able to have that beautiful future, right? And so it's like when you were learning math, did you like learning math? A lot of people don't like learning math, you know, it's difficult. But then once you know it, you need it every day. You need it to count right. chairs you're gonna buy, you need it to count, you know, the kind of revenue you're making in your company and if you're gonna make ends meet. And so that's where the lessons lie. In the middle of the problems, in the middle of the hurricane is where that beautiful gift is and it's a lesson for your life. Agreed. So let's make like a timeline for you because we started talking Um, back then from when you had the example of your parents as entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. and then you started at a 21 year your first um, business Mm -hmm. and right then you you work in different fields you have uh, you had a magazine well you had different others um, businesses Mm -hmm. but today what are you working on today Today I am working on three projects and you know, you have to focus on the one thing and or the one thing that links to similar things, right? When you start wearing too many hats at this specific time, then you lose track. So out of all the different industries that I've been, I've delegated that uh, CEO position to to different people in my organization and Mm -hmm. I am no longer as fully involved in the operations of some of the companies because right now I'm focusing on the one thing and the one thing is my motivational speaking conferences that I'm going to be in six countries in the next four months. I am. Yay, congratulations. Thank you so much. (laughs) And I am uh, focusing on uh, my book. Uh, my book will be out early 2020, and I'm so excited to release that to to everyone. And I am fo- I'm focusing on um, on a venture capital fund. So venture capital funds is where we we raise money and and we support entrepreneurs' dream to to scale their business, right? And we act as investors. And as an investor, as an active investor of these corporations. We, we, me and my partner will be sharing um, our entrepreneurial experiences and we will be leading them and motivating them on an everyday basis. And so it all goes hand in hand. My conferences right. are for entrepreneurs or, or other related topics, right? My book is to share love around the world and how we can, with an act of kindness every day, we can change the world, right? And then eventually become that that should be everybody's hobby, right? To share love, to share, you know, you have a dollar, give it away. You have a car, give somebody a ride. If somebody, yes. if, if, if the next door neighbor doesn't need milk, give them milk, you know, it's your gallon is still gonna be half, half full, right? And so right. that goes hand in hand in supporting an, uh, entrepreneurs through our investment fund. Those are the three things. The one big thing I am focusing on with, you know, the sub, sub chapters of each. Well, I wish all the luck and all the success on all of three of them. Perla, all right, uh, we're about to finish the interview, unfortunately, but okay, right now you're working on those three. But what I really f- get, get from you is like your energy and you're always, as you said, looking forward and pushing forward. Yes. So what's in the future for you? Well, uh, <laughs> I, I think very global since I've been, since I've been a little girl, right? And my dream is um, to have ambassadors around the world for the Love Soldier movement 
which is sharing love and and sharing love becoming a hobby right and anywhere you go you can touch a life the day is today it's not tomorrow and you as a person are already equipped with things with stories that will ignite other people around the world you don't have to wait until you're this level of successful or this level of thin or this level of beautiful or this level of wealth or this level of travel that that doesn't exist you know we're a work in progress and we're here to share now and ignite others to race along with us in whatever we've done right and 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 my goal is to have ambassadors and at least 30 countries in the next two years right so so we're working on this on this challenge and this movement and we will be launching it very soon before the end of the year that is great and again i wish you much success and i hope you just goes the way you are projecting it because you have the eye <laughs> perla Yeah. Thank you so much for the time you took to spend with us and please share your social media so people can uh, learn more about your work. Go ahead, please. Please follow us on Instagram, be a love soldier and Perla Tamés with three Zs on the end. We'll see you soon. We also have our website, perlatamésinspiration.com. Come there to learn for more tips on entrepreneurship. Thank you, Perla, so much. A big kiss all the way to Texas. Thanks. Thank you. Until next time. See you soon. Gracias. Important things to remember. One, pay attention to who you're sharing your time with, who are you surrounding yourself with. Two, young people follow the steps and example of older people. Three, older people never underestimate the ability of young people. Let's learn, help, and support one another. To connect with me, send me an email or a private message on my Facebook page. Stay connected, and until next time, bye-bye.